my name is Debbie Drennan, and I work at Parents Helping Parents Assistive Technology Center, the iTech Center, and I also work in their Early Start area. And today I'm going to be going over some tools in the Inclusive Early Learning Toolkit. This is a toolkit that was created in conjunction with the Inclusion Collaborative um, under a grant um, from the Inclusive Early Learning Care and Coordination Program grant. That's a mouthful to say. Um, and this video is going to be going into the different tools that have to do with students who do best with visual tools. So these tools are going to be uh, looking at students who may have visual issues, vis not visual issues, that, that learn better with visual tools. And I'm going to be going over the actual tools and I'm also going to be going over a lot of the tools in the binder that you see here. Because some of these are more universal than just for students with visual uh, learning needs. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the time timer. This is a visual timer. Many of you probably have seen them or have them in your classrooms already. It's a fairly common piece of uh, equipment. But what's nice about this is in an, an inclusive setting, this can be used for many students. Remember, students at this age have no concept of time. You tell a child five minutes at four years old, it means nothing to them. They don't understand the concept of time until they're six or seven, generally. So with this tool, you can put this in your classroom, hang it on a wall, and you can say, okay, class, 10 minutes. When the red is all gone, 10 minutes is up, and we're on to the next activity. The whole class can benefit from something like this. For those students who have difficulty maybe with transitions, this is a great way to help those students be able to transition from one activity to another, seeing the time running out. When the red's all gone, it's time to go, and it can beep. You can turn the beep off if that's too distracting for some students in the back as well. So this is the, called the time timer. It's a visual timer. Another thing I've included is, and this is unusual, but it has multi, multiple things you can do with it. This is actually called the LECU Spill Clean Oven Kit, and it's this. It is simply a black piece of plastic that you can put on a table. This can help students in two different ways. For some students, who you, they, who, they may benefit from a visual way of knowing this is their workspace. So they don't end up all over the table with all of their stuff. This can change their workspace to their area. So this is where they're going to be doing their puzzles. This is where they're going to be doing their coloring, is in this workspace. It helps them visually keep their focus to the right visual area. The other thing that this can be helpful for with is those students who have visual issues. Um, maybe the black helps them see better contrasting colors against um, the, the desk so they can see better what they're doing. So this actually has two purposes um, and it can be very helpful for those students who need that definition. Um, and it cleans up nice and folds up easy. Okay. The other thing I've included is color tape. This is a standard, I think, for most preschool classrooms, but I wanted to make sure you had a chance to play with it. You can do a lot with different colored tapes. Um, you can use the colored tape to signify different activity areas in your classroom. You can have the blue table, the orange table, the green table, and just put some colored tape on the table so the students know what color table to go to to do books, to create you know, a, a drawing. Um, it helps them and it helps you as they transition from place to place. Um, it can also be used to define a visual area. You can use tape instead of this to define an area for a student. You want them to sit in the blue square, and so you put a blue square on the, on the floor. Or they're going to be working within the purple space, and you create a square of purple space for them to work within. So it helps those students maybe who have some issues with body space and awareness. They know where to be, where they know how to go. The other thing it can be helpful with is, of course, students with visual diagnosed visual difficulties like CVI. Red has been found to be very helpful for those students who have cortical visual impairment. You put the red along the edge of the table, they can see where the table is better. So that's something also you can explore in your classroom if you have any students with cortical visual impairment using these different colors, the red, the yellow, to really emphasize the different areas they need to be in. Um, so that's always very helpful. Another tool I've included is, of course, a way to create a visual schedule. In the toolkit, you do not have these icons. Um, this is something I put on just to demonstrate it for you. Um, but you can create your own icons with whatever icon system your school district has access to. Um, and this is just a way to show people as you tell them what their activities are for the day. 
First, we're gonna come together and sing in our circle. Then we're gonna have some free time and you can play with your trucks. And then finally, we're gonna have our snack time. When they've completed an activity, they come over, they take the activity off and they put it in the all done envelope at the bottom. Now, this is great for an individual student, but let's say you want this for the whole classroom because visual schedules are very, very helpful in a preschool classroom setting. It's um, really helpful for those students with learning language difficulties as well because they can see where to go next. Just take off the straps and now it becomes nice and big. And then you just turn things and then you can create a large visual schedule the whole class can have access to and put it on your wall. So this is something I think you should explore in your classrooms because um, none of your students read yet. And if you have students in your classroom that are second language learners, or students in your classroom who are visual learners, they can all benefit from a visual schedule to know what's coming and what's coming next. Okay. Finally, the tools in the binder. There's a lot of different things in this binder that I wanted you to be aware of. Um, first of all, I have explained everywhere in this binder as much as I could what each tool is that you will find in the toolkit, the website where you can go to for the manufacturer, and a little bit of information about each tool. And so that is all included in the binder, in the very front of the binder. In the front of the binder is also where you're going to find the website for the playlist of videos that, have to, that I am creating now for you. I'm including this one. So we're going to flip through to the very first thing. The first thing in the binder is information about creating one-page profiles. If you have a student in your classroom that um, you are working with and they have a potential disability or an already diagnosed disability, this is a great tool to share with staff, that parents can share with staff about what makes a good day for a student, what makes them happy, and how that student needs to be supported. So that if you have staff turnover in your classroom or if you're getting a new student in, you already know how to help set that student up for success in your classroom if you have the parent fill this out. So we've included information for you to share with the parents on how to create that profile as well as sort of a demonstration of what the profile can look like. They certainly don't have to use this one. If they're not into dogs, they can use another one that they choose. But this is the kind of great information that's good for you as a teacher to plan for a new student in your classroom or for new staff. I've already talked about this, but this is in the binders where you're going to find the core plus fringe uh, word vocabulary list. Um, and I've already talked about that in the communication video. I've also created visual routines for you. There is the washing hands routine, um, and this is a visual way for, you can put this up in your bathroom, to help students remember the steps to properly washing their hands. Um, I've worked in preschool classrooms before, and some students forget the soap, or they forget to rinse their hands off after they've done the soap, and they just start drying them. This helps them remember all of those steps um, until they have it memorized. I've also included the calm down routine. The calm down routine is great because this particular routine um, gives you visual representation that everyone can do the same thing to help a student learn to calm down. Sit in the chair, feet on the floor, hold your hands, take three deep breaths, count to 10, good work. Do we need to do it again? Let's do it again. And we keep going through the same routine with the students to help them learn how to calm down. Because this can be really helpful for some students who are learning that self-regulation skill and to keep it consistent across staff, I've included a large one that you can work with and some smaller ones that you can take copies of and the, the teach staff can just have in their pockets as they're working with students out on the playground, for example. Included also is a choice board. This is a great place where you can put a child's visual choices that they can choose between if they're maybe nonverbal or if they get too overwhelmed by looking in the whole classroom. They can just look here, pick what they want to do next, and go do that thing. So this is nice for you to have in as well for those students, as well as a first then board. This particular board, and there's information on how to really use it on the back, is great for students maybe who have trouble with transitioning. You need them to do perhaps an unpreferred item first, and then they get to do a preferred item. So first we're gonna do maybe the circle time, and then you get to go over to the Lego, go play in your Legos, okay? So this is how you would help them get through perhaps the unpreferred to get to the preferred item. Um, there's also emotions. Some, at this age, students are still learning what those, their emotions are that they're feeling. 
And this is a way for you to help them learn what those emotions might be. This is happy. This is a happy boy. This is a happy girl. Sad boy, sad girl. And you can help talk about what the face may be and how are you feeling? Oh, you look to me like you're an angry boy today. Are you feeling angry? Um, or are you feeling sad? How are you feeling? Help them learn to identify what they're feeling and how to say the words um, so that they can um, better regulate their own emotions. Additionally, in here I have a way, they're called friendship circles. And what this is, is a great little tool and in the back you'll find little circles of activities. And what these are great for is for those students who have trouble initiating social play with other students. They can take a circle and they can go up to the other student and hand them the circle. And circles have things like, let's draw, let's go hop and skip, let's go craft, let's go play dress up. And they can hand, this is a great tool for those students who are having trouble with social interaction that they can use to hand to another student to properly ask them to play with them um, while they're learning how to say those particular words. So this is a nice tool to help with those social interactions in your classroom. I also have here a visual routine on circle time, very important. That's, that's actually a little social story. At school we had social time. Uh, circle time, during circle time we sit on the floor. So it tells them what is expected of them during circle time and they can read this before you do circle time with some students and it helps them have the proper behaviors you're looking for during circle time. And I also have a personal space social story in here as well for those students who are working on their body and space awareness. They may get too close to other students. This is a nice way for them to read a story about learning about personal space and how to maintain that circle, that bubble around them um, in the school. We also have big things that I've put in here as well that you can work with your whole class on personal space. Uh, personal space in music and art, personal space in line. This is a big one in preschool, right? So you can do a whole lesson on personal space for the whole classroom and how do you maintain that in line? And you can use this as a cue for all of those students. Finally, I have adapted stories. The adapted books are terrific for universally designed classrooms. And here I've included adapted materials for the Hungry Caterpillar. These are story props that you can use with your classroom as you're reading to engage those students who maybe aren't as engaged with just hearing the story. So these are the props. It's things like here are the three apples. So when it's time for three apples, they can pick out the three apples, figure out which one's three, they can hold it, they can count them. They can play with them. They give them something to do. You could put Velcro on them, put them on something that holds Velcro. There's a lot you can do with story props. Um, and so I've just included these for you because The Hungry Caterpillar is such a great book. There's a lot you can do within that book um, to help engage those students who need that alternative. I also have, for those students who need more personal, more individual attention, a working for and a token board. So for those students maybe who are struggling with behaviors in your classroom and you're really help trying to get them to sit still during circle time or you're trying to get them to not hit when they're upset, when they have a good behavior, you give them a star. And I've included 14 stars here. And then when they finally get the number of stars they need, they get whatever it is that reward is that you're giving them. This helps with positive behavior planning in your classroom. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, contact us at Parents Helping Parents.